Hey, what up everybody? My name is Stan Smith from Iron Sharp K9 and we are about to do a training session with Boots. And we're gonna let you guys in on all of the secrets and all of the things that we like to do to make our dogs happy, successful, and enjoy working with us. The most important thing is have a value treat. Have a value reward for them. And don't think about a reward as I'm giving my dog food. Think about it as I'm paying my dog for the work that they are doing. Whenever the dog is doing anything for us, that is their job. Even if it's a simple sit, even if it's a simple down, all of those things are their job and they need to get paid for those. If you wanna have your dog pay attention when there's distractions out there, when there's other people, when there's other dogs, you have to give them a reason that you're valuable. So we're gonna walk you through some of the things that we do with Boots in a training session. So stay tuned. So one thing I like to do is have a variety of treats. So I'm gonna cut some cheese up here and put it in the bag. And I'm also gonna put some kibble and some of the full moon treats. So this random randomizes the treat value that the dog is gonna get. Sometimes they're gonna work for kibble, which is a low value treat. Sometimes they're gonna work for cheese or the full moon, which is really high value. And then we're just gonna continue to mix it up so the dog doesn't get bored with that reward. You have to keep it fresh for your dog. You have to keep it fun. If you're not having fun, the dog's not having fun. And if the dog's not having fun, why would the dog wanna work with you? Why would the dog wanna come back when they're just chasing a squirrel or there's another dog over there? If you're not fun, if you're always super hard on your dog, your recall, your commands are not gonna be that valuable because the moment that dog gets an inch of freedom, they're gonna take it. So give your dog time to be a dog. And we're gonna walk you through all of this stuff in this session we're gonna do with Boots so you can see how we interact with our dogs. And when they're working, it needs to be crisp, it needs to be precise, it needs to be exact. But as soon as we say free, that dog gets to go back to being a dog. As soon as we give them that reward or that paycheck, they get to go back to being a dog. So the dog understands, all right, work is work. And when he says free, it's Friday, it's the weekend. So y'all stay tuned, man. All right, so we got our bag of, bag of tricks, bag of snacks, bag of paycheck here. And like we said before, if you want to control, if you want obedience of your dog, it all starts here. It all starts developing a good routine about getting in and out of the kennel. So, stay in here. Nope. He needs to wait calmly until he says, free! That a bowie booty boots! That a bowie booty boots! So we're gonna work off some door manners while we're here. Ah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, let me fix this here. There we go. Wait. Nope. Wait. He needs to wait for permission. You don't want your dog just busting out of the door. This is things that are gonna keep your dog safe. Free! You don't know what's on the other side of that door sometimes. You don't know if it's the mailman, the Amazon person's out there and they're delivering stuff and they don't like dogs. So make sure you give your dog a release command. So one of the first things I do is we just get out here, walk around a little bit, let them sniff, let them get all those distractions out early before we start working because when I want him to work, those distractions need to be not as much interesting. Sniffing. He thinks we're gonna do this. Go ahead. <laughs> when you have a dog that wants to work, this is what you get, people. The condition response that work is fun. All right, so we got out here. He sniffed around. He's peed on some things, and now we're gonna start that training session. I want to start every. Of course, he's gonna get right in front of the camera. Don't knock it over. <laughs> oh, boo. I want to start every session that I do with him with some type of recall. I use my whistle recall. I want that to be the most reliable recall that he has. So whenever he hears that whistle, he's going to get that reward. So we'll toss some kibble over here. Free. Move back. When he does that, mark that behavior. As soon as he's in that position, you want him to know that that's exactly what you want him to do. So we're going to come out, reward that. Free. Let them know we're done. The next thing I would do is just do a couple more recalls. Now he's paying attention. I want it to be very efficient, very efficient. This is the most important thing though. You want to stop when he's doing it right. You don't want the dog to learn that they can do things sloppily. You ready? You gotta do it right. You gotta do it right. Yes, I'll go and freeze up. Oh, 
mark those behaviors. Let your dog know that you like it when they do these things for you. So the next thing we're going to do with him is I want to been teaching him some tricks. I've been teaching him some different stuff, so we're going to go through kind of the tricks that he knows. I got to grab my clicker to mark the reward. All right, so we got our clicker. We're back to it. You ready, Booch? So we're going to go through some of the tricks that he's already been doing, and I'm just going to show you guys that again. So when I want him to twirl his body, what is this? Clockwise, I'm gonna tell him twist and I'm gonna mark it. Twist, mark it. I'm gonna do these in threes. Twist. Nope. Twist. Nope. Nope. Twist. Twist. Yeah. Twist. There you go. So on that one, he didn't do it properly. He was trying to cheat. So I want him to know if you try to cheat, you do not get that reward. If you do not do the things you are being asked, you do not get that reward. So we're going to come back and ask him one more time. Ready? Twist. Get a boy. Yeah. Free. Get boy. And on that one, when he did it properly without even really having to lure or ask him twice, we want to mark that. And we call that a big jackpot. Letting him know that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Stop jumping up there before you knock the camera down. Yeah, nobody cares you're cute. So the next thing we're going to do is we want him to spin the other way. And I'm going to use the word spin for that. So we'll go spin. Good. Spin. Good. You ready? Is you ready? Spin. Yeah, a boy. Great. You did it, you did it, you did it. And just like that other one, after that third one, boom, jackpot. All right, so we're going to go through a little bit more stuff. You ready? What's up? What's up? Good. What's up is his speak command. So whenever I say, what's up? I want him to bark. What's up? What's up? What's up? Good boy. Ready? Back. Back. Ready? Back. Get him! Oh, three! And at the end of all of these commands, I want him to know when he's done. So we're breaking them up. Think about it like you're going to school. You go to math class, the bell rings. You go to history class, the bell rings. You go to Spanish class, the bell rings. And then at the end of the day, you go home. And then, at the end of the year, depending on your location, you take some type of standardized test, and they match everything together, and that's what you're being judged on. So when you're working with your dog, break it down clearly and effectively what you want them to do into individual bite-sized training sessions. Make them successful and end, end, this is the very most important part. This is the most important part. End why the dog is doing it right. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. End while they're doing it exactly how you want. And they're going to learn that that's the proper way. So now, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Back it up. Good. Get a boy. Ready? You ready? Bet. Nope. Bet. Nope. Bet. Yes. Good. So here we're working on some different changes of positions. I don't, I have the casual sit command that I use for my kids, but when I want him to sit in this position, I'm going to use the word bet. Bet. Nope. Bet. Nope. There you go. Bet. Nope. That's bet. Get a boy! Get a boy! 
and I'm introducing all of this stuff to Boots. So I'm not worried. I'm not wanting to correct him when he's not doing it right because he's still learning. There's no rush. And I know people are like, well, your dog's jumping on you. Your dog's jumping on you. Yes, he's jumping on me because I'm going to have a trick where he has to jump off of me. And I don't want to discourage these behaviors. Whenever we're doing bite work or anything, he's going to have to jump on people. So I don't want to discourage these behaviors. If I don't want him to do something, I would just say, ah, and let him know. Hey, that's not the proper thing to get your reward right now. So you got to do something else. Breaking it down, communicating to your dog. You don't always have to be, don't do that, don't do that. Beating your dog up, making him not want to interact with you. Just simply, hey, relax. Talk to your dog. Let him know exactly how to be successful, exactly how to fit into your lifestyle, people. Want to do some more? What's up? Bet. So I wanted to introduce the role to him. So we're going to work on that now. We're going to see how that goes. Okay. So first he has to get into that down position. And then we're going to pull the tree here. Roll. Good. Free. Again. Roll. Good boy. Try one more time. One more time, booty. One more time, boot man. One more time, boot man. Roll. And just like when you're teaching the difference between the spin and the twist, I want him to roll the other way. So for right now, I'm gonna call it flop or something. I might change it later on. You ready? Yeah, you gotta do the other way now. Good. Yeah, the boy. Come on, yeah, Saku. Yeah, the boy. Yeah. So it's very important that whenever you're working with your dog, you teach him to do things both ways. So if that means going over a jump, if that means going under a hurdle, all of these things, make sure they know how to do both ways. So let's try it. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. Yes. So right now I'm not even marking it with a word because I don't want to de like devalue my word. I don't want to water it down. So right now I'm just taking them through the motions. This is where that lure comes in handy. Alright, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Yes. So this is what a training session looks like. Walk your dog through different things. Break it up. Make sure they get the rewards. And when you guys are finished, let your dog be a dog. So we're going to grab this. I'm going to ask him to do one simple thing. Ready? Hit. Stay tuned, stay sharp, communicate to your dog exactly what you want them to do, and they're going to be there for you, people. Don't rush the process, trust the process, brick by brick. You see what the shirt says. It takes a little while to build a dog, but if you do something every day, five minutes, three minutes here, two minutes there, 45 seconds here, those sessions are going to pay off for you. Don't rush it. Continue to build that bond. Continue to build that value between you and your dog, and they're going to be here. If this helped you guys, make sure you share this video for somebody. Leave us a comment that says, put up the swords. Put up the swords. Let us know. We're doing something to help y'all out, man. This is what it's about. Iron sharpens iron, and we want to make it easier for you guys to live with your partner. So stay tuned. Stay sharp. Take care, you dog.